Hello, my name is Dr. Scott Young with Hearing Solutions Centers, and today we're gonna to talk about ear and hunting protection. Coming right up. So when you think about hunting protection, you gotta first understand sound. You see, OSHA has regulations, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration actually has regulations about 90 decibels and above sound. That's for continuous sounds. Like you have a grinding noise in the place or you have you know, fans going on that make this loud noise or whatever that machine that might happen. But there are also impact noises. So a gunshot is a, a, like an impact noise. So for instance, for even high velocity 22 rifles, they can be as much as 140, boom, pat, really quick impact sound. Uh, 175 decibels will be higher caliber rifles. Even 180 decibels can possibly cause internal damage. At 190 decibels, here's the thing, it'll actually cause bleeding in the lungs. That kind of crazy. I had a patient of mine and he was one of the greatest generation. And in World War II, he was doing the island hopping. So that is, and I don't remember which of the islands, but he was, he was on one of those islands that they had bamboo shoots. Now bamboo shoots, when they fall, they kind of just open up and they have this huge hole in the middle of it. And he was crawling beside a bamboo shoot. And he said, in his words, I'm not trying to be racist here, the Jap soldier drops it on the other side of, of the bamboo shoot. And if he happened to be walking or crawling by and it went into his right ear. Now, he noticed that his right ear was completely gone. He got some hearing benefit, you know, based upon this, but we were talking about a hearing aid in his left ear. And he was like, why would I be talking about a hearing aid in my left ear? Because hearing damage will go over to the left side. That's what happened. So the difference between that impact and sustained noise, impact noises can be louder, but they can also cause damage. Um, I was talking to a, a, a doctorate level person, a uh, theologian, and he was talking about how a shotgun blast went off by his, I think it was his left ear, and caused the damage instantaneously. My father had a shotgun blast go by his right ear and had a major change in his right ear. That's one of the things that can happen. It can be very, very quick kind of things. That's about 175 decibels. Now, <clears throat> who are at significant risk? That would be the gun range managers. Now, if you're ever on a gun range, there's a whole bunch of people that are firing different types of things. Some of them have a nine millimeter, like I do. Some people have, you know, 45s, a much bigger right, uh, a pistol. Some of them are bringing their big, you know, guns, a 30 out six. Some of them are even bringing out, you know, machine guns. Or, you know, they have to kind of figure out what they're doing. But what happens is the gun range manager will say, fire, and you know, they can fire all their rounds. And then he will say, quit, put your gun down, uh, you know, unload, he'll make you unload. Now he needs to be able to hear, but protect himself. Police, most police officers have to go on the gun range and recertify themselves every year or two in that way. So they have to be on the gun range. You have to be able to be good at what you're doing. The military also has abilities. You know, we, we talk about um, uh, Lee Har Harvey Oswald, and I don't want to get too heavy into some conspiracy theories, but he was actually a marksman, but he was on, on the lowest range of the marksman scale. But there are marksmen out there. So there's a, two, there's a difference between passive and active protection. Now we're gonna show you some pictures on the screen that will show you a little bit about this. But passive protection is just putting on the headphones or having the, the earmuffs or the, the, excuse me, the impressions for ears. So what happens with the, the earmuffs is that you can get anywhere from, if you have it on correctly and it has five pounds of pressure, that means when you take off your, head, your headphones and, you, and if they're sitting there like this without any, without any touching it, they're not working anymore. You gotta throw them away. If they come together like this, or they're coming like this, that's you, you've got them correct. That's five pounds of pressure. When it does that, it's gonna do 20, 21, 26 decibels at best. 
26 is kind of pushing it. When you do customized protection, like you're gonna see here up on the screen, you're also, that's when you're gonna protect your hearing all the way because it's made for all portions of your ears. So when you have that kind of protection, that's 31 decibels. But then we also have active protection. Now for those same people we talked about before, the, the, uh, the gun range managers, the police officers, the military, there's other people that like to do this. So I mean, for instance, a person who's had a problem but wants to go out and grouse hunt. Grouse hunting is, is, a, is an event that happens that you, you don't shoot that many rounds off. When you're hunting, you're not normally shooting more than one, two, three you know, shots. Now, I grew up in Colorado where when you hunted, you don't have a perch where it's a little different in Oklahoma where they have a perch and they're waiting around and there could be many people around. My dad would take me out in the nowhere land. We would park where other people would camp. We would camp where other people just barely passed where they would go hunt toward. So we would maybe be a half mile in and then we would go so far, no one would ever go around. Now I'm 10 years old and trying to tromp behind him and he had kind of a, a sideways step that was a really tough goose step to kind of walk into. And, and we were out there and you know, you'd, you'd never shoot more than two, three, four rounds at total. And so he wanted to hear those creaking, the cracking sounds around him, especially in the snow. Now, if you're not in snow, you're gonna hear those sounds, but you can't hear them with your protection. And that's why we have what I call active protection. So on the screen, you're gonna see a little bit more about these. These can be customized. First off, you can do a headphones and have a little volume control, or you can do custom ones. Now again, headphones with volume control is gonna be less than a passive protection, maybe 21 decibels. Because every time you turn that up, it's, it's, it's losing some of that abilities. Now I had a guy if, if, have you ever seen a movie, True Lies? It's a really kind of cool movie. In the, in the movie, you know, uh, 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 Tom, uh, Hanks, no, sorry. Thinking of Tom Arnold's in the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, Tom Arnold's hysterical in that movie. And um, everything that Arnold Schwarzenegger hits, I mean, he just bam, 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 He's, he never misses, okay? And I had a friend of mine named uh, Kelly. And Kelly Raglan has this amazing ability. When I watched his YouTube videos, I couldn't believe. And I set some, I made some uh, um, uh, active monitors for him. And he, one of the things that he complained about is when he had his 50 caliber, and, and this 50 cal ha actually had air cooled around it. And that he, he, when he had it turned up, it was still causing him some problems. And I was like, dude, you don't understand that 50 cal, once he showed me a picture of it and I looked it up, that sucker's at 180 decibels. There's no way I can protect his hearing over that. He had to turn him off. And he said, when I turn him off, it's good. I can live with it. But when I had it on just a little bit, it was causing him problems. That's just the nature of that particular beast. But on every other type of rifle that you would maybe use or, or pistols, because he pull out pistols and do the same kind of thing, you can have a little bit of protection. Now they're opposite of what hearing aids are trying to do. You see, hearing aids, when they hear sounds, they're amplifying sounds particular to your hearing loss by FDA controls. And they have all this kind of cool things that are happening related to your prescription that are put in by your audiologist. Versus active monitors, active kind of setups, what they will have is they cannot be controlled by the audiologist. They're just picked and they give you maybe about 20 decibels of boost. It's a mild amplification. Only the mildest of hearing losses could make a difference out of it. It's not a hearing aid. Don't think it is. You're never gonna have that abilities with that. What happens to it is again, opposite of what hearing aids do. When loud sounds happen for a person with hearing aid, it quickly knocks down and quickly recovers. It's called the attack and release time. And it's supposed to come up because maybe you hear a dish breaking. I was at First Watch uh, a restaurant here in Tulsa and there was a dish breaks. And, and it, my hearing is whoop, had a quick, quick uh, cutoff. But on the powerful uh, monitors, these active ones for hunters, when you have custom ones and the custom ones and they're turned up a little bit, what they will do is attack quickly, just like a hearing aid does, but it slowly releases. 
because it expects that you're probably going to pop off two or three more rounds. So you'll have problems. You can't hear people. And the answer is, of course. So think about the gun range manager. The gun range manager, you set up, fire, bam, 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 bam. And in his systems, his in-ears, or not in-ears, but his ear protection, we use this thing called Magnum Ears by Starkey. It's one of my favorite ones out there. There's also Westone has this, but I kind of like the Magnum Ears with Starkey. They just, just do a pretty darn good job for this particular device. And what will happen is they knock it down and they keep knocked down because everyone's firing around him. And so he can't hear anything. Of course you can't hear anything because they're all firing and we want to protect his hearing. And then he says, okay, stop. And he sees they're kind of out of clips and he'll tell them to stop. He has his own little practice. And, and there's a short, or there's a little bit of a time frame before it recovers because it's waiting for, is someone shooting off another round that we still need to protect? And then it finally recovers and he says, you know, unload and, you know, sit there, wait. And, and, you know, people can kind of get ready for the next thing and he's checking things around him. Then it recovers so he can hear people talking to him and give instructions back related to that. That's what those things are made for. So I, I want to share with you a gun, the gun range story. It's a powerful story and on here, we're going to show you the USS Missouri. It's one of my videos we're going to add in here. It, it was startling and amazing to be on the USS Missouri. This is in World War II, started, it was uh, built in uh, World War I time frame. I think it was uh, uh, 1915. But I'm sitting at a 50 cal. And, and, and a 50 caliber is a big old sucker, just like I was talking to you about Kelly Raglan using. And you're thinking about that 50 caliber. And, and it's right on the ship. It's right off of that ship. And, and there, was this, there was this question that was asked and I'm kind of answering in and the person was just like, okay, you can answer the question. And, and they were like, why, would, why was this happening? Well, they'd have to have tracers that happened because the Japanese zeros that were hitting those, those ships, they would come down on, on, here's the ship and it's on the side and they'd come down to the bow or stern and they would come down like this, right on line because they wanted to drop their torpedo and they had to drop it really level because if they dropped it too much, the thing would just go straight down. It was a dumb fire kind of thing. So they had to drop down onto the deck and get really low and straight. They would drop their torpedo, fire, but they would fire as they were going along. So they'd fire all the way and then, then shoot up over the, the ship. That's why the 50 cal guys, he's firing crazy at them. And this isn't, you know, smart targeting. It's just firing the best he can with this thing shaking. And that's the hearing loss that happens. World War II is the start of the hearing loss. You might have hearing loss because you've been around a lot of gun sounds. Get protection. Have passive or active protection that's made exactly for your ears. And we can protect up to 31 decibels of of abilities for your own ears because they're made for you. You can come see us and you can let us do that for you. And ours start at $85 an ear and go up depending upon what we're looking for. Some of them, the, uh, the, the Magnum ears are $500 to $600 per ear. And you go, well, why would I do that? I can buy this online. It doesn't protect. You have to have custom protection. The, the best protection is anywhere from 16 to maybe 20, 22 decibels. When we do them, they're 31 decibels. So come and see us, subscribe to us, and I appreciate you listening to me. Thank you so much.